Uh, today we're joined by the new CEO of Novonics, uh, previously the Chief Operating Officer, uh, Dr. Chris Burns. Uh, Chris, a um, lot of chat about Novonics recently, particularly post um, Battery Day. Uh, one of the first things I'd like to discuss is you've had some changes in regards to senior management. Um, can you talk us through those changes, please? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the changes recently with our management structure are all uh, related to the shift in our business, really focusing on our operations in North America. So of course, the, the biggest difference is Phil St. Baker stepping down and, and myself taking over that group CEO role. And over the past couple of years, Phil's done a great job positioning the company, keeping it funded through our research and development phase, uh, through our share base in Australia primarily, while I ran the North American based companies, Pure Graphite and BTS. And so now that, uh, you know, we've, we've done this capital raise a few months ago, really positioned ourselves for growth over the coming years with Pure Graphite. Um, the shift now is less around the, the corporate uh, strategy and more around the execution. And so this shift of myself and Nick Liveris really stepping up and taking over the operational lead of the business is in line with how we've been really running the company uh, with us in charge of the operational units. So it's, you're gonna see a lot of business as usual. It's really just this transition from our corporate positioning and strategy into the execution phase of our business. Thanks, Chris. Um, Chris, Battery Day was always seen <coughs> a, a, a bit of a catalyst for the industry and for Novonics in particular. You've, you've had a very strong share price in, in, the, in the lead up to Battery Day. And now you've had some really extreme volatility in your share price. Can, can you kind of talk to Battery Day and, and why the share price volatility? So, you know, we picked up a lot of um, publicity in, in kind of the Tesla following with, you know, a, lo a lot of our close relationships with the company, specifically my background, uh, working with Jeff Don and previously working with Tesla. And of course, they're exactly the type of business that we want to work with uh, through our pure graphite business, they are an influencer of supply chain. They're going to be a, buy, a volume buyer of key battery materials. Um, so there was a lot of, I think, hype being generated around potential partnerships. And, and we're not unique in that sense that many um, companies coming into the supply chain for lithium ion batteries were also um, had, had some expectations, let's say, around, around battery day. But, you know, battery day was Tesla's time to stand up and talk about their technologies, their advancements, uh, not lay out who they're working with in supply chain or any of these other things. So I think, you know, another thing to note is that our register <clears throat> grew in size significantly, I think from only a couple thousand shareholders uh, in about March of this year, up to about 14 or 15,000 shareholders on the register. So you know, we picked up a lot of, of people participating in the stock and many from North America as well. So, you know, I think that's, that was the expectation. We had some people that were looking for uh, some big announcement that was going to happen at Battery Day, but it, it doesn't change the way we look at our business. Uh, in fact, you know, when we, when we talk a little more about Battery Day, I think it, it continues to emphasize that we're on the right track in innovating processes to bring down the cost of, of key materials in the battery sector. And, and in regard to, to battery day, what, what were the key takeaways for, for yourself and Nabonics? Yeah, I think there, so, you know, I thought battery day was really exciting to watch Elon and Drew uh, really outline their target roadmap in, in cell cost reduction. <clears throat> you know, we, in the industry, we kind of know that lithium ion cells are, are good enough from a performance standpoint for vehicles and energy storage. They just need to be cheaper. Uh, that's really the barrier to electric vehicle adoption. So them outlining a roadmap to reduce the cell cost by up to 56% through primarily their cell manufacturing technologies and cell to pack and or cell to vehicle technologies is really exciting. And, you know, there's two reasons for that. One is, of course, getting to that type of price target is really when electric vehicles will take off because of cost parity with, with industrial, in, internal combustion engines. And the second is they're doing this all still based on 
today's battery chemistry, right? High, high nickel cathode materials, you know, they spoke about silicon, uh, you know, they use silicon in some of their, in their cells now, and it was unclear what their silicon roadmap exactly was, but I still believe, and many others after battery day have agreed, like Benchmark Minerals, that graphite will still be the dominant anode of the decade um, to support these vehicle cell platforms. And so, in my in in our view of battery day like i said it really reiterated our approach that process technology is where there's room for innovation to drive costs down that's exactly the way we approach uh, material science and that these high nickel cathodes and they are going to use lfp cathodes as well but these high nickel cathodes with graphite silicon blended anodes are going to be <clears throat> excuse me the technology for the foreseeable future. So people talking about solid state batteries, for example, coming in and completely turning the industry on its head. You know, of course, Tesla's probably been working on those types of technologies and this was their time to get up and say if they were market ready and they don't, they obviously don't think they are. And if they can get to these cost points while still using today's chemistry, it's gonna make it that much more challenging for those new technologies to break into the market because they will lose their advantage of potential cost savings. So, you know, our takeaways from Battery Day were all positive. You know, we're exactly on the right track to trying to bring critical materials that are gonna be using these batteries to the market at lower prices with a outside of Asia supply chain. Uh, Chris, there's a lot of talk, obviously, with Battery Day and Tesla, but obviously Europe, BMW and Volkswagen are a big part of that market. What's the strategy moving into Europe? Yeah, so I think the fundamental difference when you look at a company like Tesla versus a company like Volkswagen or BMW is Tesla is still striving. Well, it's very apparent from Battery Day. They said they will build their own cells in Berlin. Um, so they are working directly with their supply chain. They will build the cells, build the vehicles. Folks like Volkswagen and BMW are still partnering with the cell manufacturers. And so there's a, there's a good approach to working with both the cell manufacturers and the vehicle OEMs, which we are, uh, in qualifying materials into those sectors. And of course, the, frankly, the targets and the forecast for uh, battery manufacturing in Europe outweighs that of of battery manufacturing in North America. Now, of course, Tesla kind of just set the bar a little higher saying they're gonna do three terawatt hours by the end of the decade themselves. Um, but the auto OEMs in Europe are extremely motivated uh, and they are concerned about critical material supply over the coming three to five years. And therefore they are not leaving that as the sole responsibility of the cell manufacturers and they are reaching past the cell manufacturers and working directly with the supply chain. So Europe is without question going to be a, a huge market for lithium ion battery production uh, and, and therefore hopefully the, you know, the production of critical materials as well. And if you look at some of the material we've put out, you know, we've started uh, down this path and it's really part of our phase two growth plan is to be setting up a second facility in Europe. Thanks, Chris. And, um, and finally, what's the focus for the next six to 12 months and, and, what's, and what should investors look out for? Yeah, over the next six to 12 months, uh, as I said at the beginning, you know, we're really into this execution phase. So we have funding in place to continue to scale the production capacity of pure graphite, which we're going to be doing. Um, you know, we'll be giving updates on the, the Samsung contract and the deliveries associated with that, as well as progress with our MOU with Sanyo, and of course, any other of our customer development programs, which materialize into uh, a contract of some form. And so, you know, over the next six to 12 months, I think it's gonna be a really exciting time as we really get into full swing, delivering material and expanding our customer base uh, in Pure Graphite, as well as advancing some of our research programs uh, and new materials endeavors through, through our BTS business unit. Uh, Chris Burns, thank you for your time. Great, thanks Tim.